Like many farmers across the United States in the early 1930s, farmers in Indiana dreamt of the day electricity would light up their homes and farms and bring the modern day necessities to the countryside. Across rural America, people suffered through the Great Depression, but held onto a vision of flipping that switch, just like the city folk. Electricity would soon make farm work, chores, and home life much easier for rural families while dramatically improving their quality of life. The power companies claimed it was not economically feasible to build electric lines to the homes and farms in rural areas. They said the cost would be too much and that farmers would never use enough electricity to pay off the necessary investment. It soon became apparent that the rural people would have to do something on their own if they were to enjoy the benefits of electric service at a reasonable cost. They began organizing rural electric cooperatives. Indiana was one of the states that took the lead in rural electrification. Fortunately, local farmers were able to take advantage of a new program the federal government formed to help extend electric service into rural areas. This new program was the result of an executive order signed by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt on May 11, 1935 that established the Rural Electric Administration, or REA as it was known. For this new rural electrification effort, a fund of $100 million was allocated to lend capital to locally owned rural electric cooperatives. Electric cooperatives across the state began filing their articles of incorporation. Establishing the cooperative back then was a tough job. It meant holding meetings to explain what could be done, signing up neighbors as members of the co-op, working with engineers and lawyers to set up the cooperative, obtaining easements from folks, some of whom thought this was a government trick to get their land, and showing people how to wire their homes for electricity. When the Indiana Group applied for REA money, though, employees at the lending agency laughed. Surely a group of farmers couldn't take charge and bring power into a dark land where big power companies wouldn't venture. The co-ops would fail, they thought, Nothing could be further from the truth. Farmers and residents helped spur the expansion of line construction throughout rural Indiana. Indiana electric cooperatives have grown and become an important asset not only to their members, but to the community at large as well. The cooperative, in the minds of many of those early pioneers in rural electrification, is literally a dream that came true though only after a great deal of work and cooperation. Gone are the days of coal oil lanterns, wood cook stoves, and ice boxes. And gone are the days of members reading their own meters, two cent electricity, and postcard billing. However, the rural electric purpose and principles remain the same as they were in the 1930s, to provide reliable electric service at a reasonable cost to members while preserving local member ownership and control. Indiana electric cooperatives were a vision shared by many of your neighbors and relatives years ago. It was this neighbor helping neighbor attitude and determination of rural farmers and residents that helped bring electricity to Indiana's countryside. <laughs>